In our last video, we talked about how to set up an ice table for an equilibrium question. And in this video, we're going to do another example of setting up an ice table, but this time we're going to use it to solve for x when the k value is known. So this question says, the below reaction has an equilibrium constant of k is equal to 5.4 times 10 to the minus 8. If 0.2 molar of A2 and 0.3 molar of B2 are added to a flask, what will be the concentration of AB at equilibrium? And in this question, we have an equilibrium that looks like A2 plus B2 is in equilibrium with 2AB. So I've set up another ice table. Now, I know that this is an ice table question because we are solving for an exact amount of something at equilibrium conditions. If a question just wants to know if the equilibrium will go towards the products or towards the reactants, you don't need to set up an ice table for those questions. But if they want you to solve for the exact concentration or the exact number of moles of one of the reactants or products at equilibrium, that is when you want to use an ice table. So that is what is happening in this question because they want us to get the concentration of AB at equilibrium. So here is our ice table. We have all three components uh, represented in the ice table, and I'm gonna fill in the initial concentrations of all three of them. We were told that we have 0.2 molar of A2, 0.3 molar of B2, and we were not told anything about the amount of AB. That means we can assume that it is zero in the initial conditions. Then what we're gonna do is consider that we have to lose our reactants and gain products for this reaction to progress towards equilibrium. In order to do that, we're going to lose some of our A2 molecule, we're going to lose some of our B2 molecule, and we're going to gain some of our AB molecule. You'll notice that A2 and B2 have minus x for their change row. So that means we are losing some amount x from our initial concentrations in order to reach equilibrium. We don't know what that amount is yet though, so that's why we write it as an x variable rather than an actual number. Now the amount AB gets a plus sign because we're gaining it. We can't lose anything from zero molar. We can only gain AB. And the two comes from the fact that there is a two coefficient in the equilibrium equation. So every time you react an A2 molecule, you're gonna make two equivalents of AB. So it has to be twice as much for AB than what we lost for the A2 or for the B2. Then we're gonna add the first two rows together to get the equilibrium row. We end up with 0.2 minus X of A2, 0.3 minus X of B2, and 2X of the AB. Now these are not actual numerical amounts at the moment. We have some variable x in all three of them, but that's okay. We can solve for x as long as we have the equilibrium constant. And we do, the k value is given. It's 5.4 times 10 to the minus eight. So this is our equilibrium equation. Remember, the equilibrium equation will be the concentration of products in the numerator and the concentration of reactants in the denominator and any coefficients will become the exponent. So that's why AB is squared, because there's a two coefficient to AB in the chemical equation. So let's go ahead and plug in our equilibrium amounts in terms of X. So AB is 2X, so we're gonna get 2X squared in our numerator. A2 is 0.2 minus X, and B2 is 0.3 minus X. So those two terms will be in the denominator. Now, if we want to solve this, we need to remember that this is all going to be equal to that K value of 5.4 times 10 to the minus eight. We could rearrange this and get it into the quadratic form in order to solve for X. However, I'm going to go over a method that is a little bit more straightforward that will allow us to avoid using the quadratic formula. Now I want to look at our K value. If K is very small, so on the order of 10 to the minus five or smaller, then the numerator must be much smaller than the denominator. Now think about why this must be true. 10 to the minus eight is a very, very, very small number. So if you want to get a small number, the denominator must be much larger than the numerator. So what does this mean for our X term? 
Well, in the numerator, we have 2x all squared, so that must be a very small term relative to our denominator. And in our denominator, we have specific numbers minus x. The only way that k can be very small is if x is very small, because a small x will give us a relatively small numerator, and subtracting a very, very small number from 0.2 or 0.3 will not result in a very big change. If you subtract a number that is, for example, 0 0.000001 from 0.2, you're essentially not changing that number at all. So we are going to eliminate the minus x terms. We're allowed to do this by what we call the small x approximation. If k is very small, that means x must be very small. So subtracting a very, very small number from a larger number is essentially not going to change that number at all. So we're going to end up simplifying our equation to look more like this. We have 2x all squared in the numerator, and in the denominator, we've eliminated the minus x terms, and we now only have 0 0.2 times 0 0.3. So this is a much, much easier question to solve at this point because we no longer have multiple x terms. We just have that 2x all squared in the numerator. So what we'll do next is we're going to remember that this is all equal to that k value of 5.4 times 10 to the minus 8. Now we can solve this using algebra. We can rearrange the equation to look like this. 2x all squared is equal to 5.4 times 10 to the minus 8 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.3. So I've just done a cross multiplication there to isolate the x term and bring the other terms to the other side of the equation. Now in order to get rid of the squared term, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, like this. And that is going to eliminate the squared term on the left and we can get an actual value for those terms on the right. So now we have 2x is equal to the square root of the entire right side. We can simplify this even further to get an actual number for x. If we divide both sides by 2, then we get rid of that 2 on the left side, and we end up with just x. So x is equal to this whole term under the square root, all divided by 2. And that gives us an actual number of 2.8 times 10 to the negative 5. That is our value for x. So let's remind ourselves what we're solving for. We are solving for the concentration of AB at equilibrium. Now, if we look at our ice table, we can see that at equilibrium, AB has a concentration of 2x. So we have our value of x. That means we can now solve for what AB is equal to. So we're going to take our x value and multiply it by 2. And that's going to give us our answer of 5.69 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. Remember, x is generally representing a concentration. Our answer should have units of molar because the, the ice table was filled with values in units of molarity. So that has to be the units for our answer. And that's that. That's how we get to our solution using our ice table. And you can use this small x approximation anytime you have a small k value, and it will really simplify your work for you so that you can avoid having to use the quadratic formula and still end up with a relatively accurate answer for your final concentration at equilibrium.